Hello! My bullet system is universal, which means that I use the same method for my bullets, migration, signifiers, and color coding system all across the board. So that's for my note taking for school, my type notes, handwritten notes, my bullet journal, um, lecture notes, absolutely anything. I use the exact same system to take, um, to take things down. So although I've already made a video in which I talk about exactly how I handwrite my notes, I wanted to put together a quick video to share with you exactly how I use my bullet system and that way you can access it whenever you want. This particular spread in my collections journal is also a printable, so I'll have the link down below to my blog where you can download it and print it. And the reason I'm sharing this now is because I'm currently setting up my collections journal. This is my collections journal. This is my bullet journal. Fancy, fancy. And so I just finally set up my bullet system page and it's nice and neatly organized. You'll remember this one from before. This one is my color system. So let's get right into it. When it comes to bullets, I have four different types of bullets. This is for a regular task and I'll write the deadline in brackets. This one is for a regularly occurring task. So if I want to work out or cook or bake, um, something like that, I'll put it with an open circle. An event is with a full dot. Um, with my events in my bullet journal, I've kind of gone through a few different phases. At the moment, I keep track of everything in my Google Calendar. I think it's the easiest and all the features are already there for you. Then I have my notes or ideas with dots. And this is true all across the board, as I said already. So in my notes for school, I use the same method. Then for migration, migration basically means if I've completed a task or if I'm moving a task, how I deal with that um, in my bullet journal. So if I completed a task, I fill in the bubble, of course. If I haven't yet completed the task, but I want to do it at a later date, I'll put a little arrow like this and leave it open. And this is how I avoid rewriting the tasks uh, day to day. And I'll simply, um, on the day of, I'll simply take a look at previous day's unfinished tasks that look like this, and I'll check them off when I finish them. If I've actually moved a task or rewritten it for some reason because I want to have it on the day, um, you know, on the current day, I'll put an X and I'll have the arrow. And then if I want to move the task for later, like a long-term project, and it's not gonna be in my to-do lists um, for the next few days, I will just put a little arrow like this and I'll move it to the respective list. This is usually if the task belongs in a collection or some kind of like a long-term project or long-term habits list. And then for signifiers, these are basically symbols that I put in front of my bullets that um, make them stand out in, in a way. And this isn't just for the to-do lists, this is also for notes or ideas. If I have a happy face, that's for fun tasks. If I have the free time in the day and I finished everything else, then I'll do that. The exclamation mark and the star are for various important tasks, and depending on how I'm feeling, I'll use the exclamation or the star. But it's not a very specific, um, there's no specific meaning behind it. Then when it comes to the notes, I have a, a system for writing down different types of notes. So a normal note just looks like this. If there's a, um, a question that I want clarified, I'll write it in pink or on a sticky note, and I'll write down a one and circle it in the left margin. So this is my um, margin because I do use a modified Cornell system. I'll link the video down below where I talk about exactly how I take those kind of notes, but this is basically a line that I draw on the page like this. There's usually a lot more room that I leave because I write things on the side as well as on this side. And right next to the margin, that's where I'll put the signifiers. If there's a question from the textbook or a question that the teacher poses in class, then I'll write it in blue. And that's for things that I really want to stand out. When I answer the question, I'll write it down in black as though it's a normal note, and then I'll just write down the number one and circle it um, in black next to it. And that basically ties it to the original question up there. Um, this is actually wrong, so what I would normally do this would be number two. 
So I would um, keep it in chronological order, regardless of the color, I'll still do one, two, three, and so on. That way the black circled number corresponds to the, um, the colored number up above. If there's statistics, for example, for a course like economics or even in history, then I'll write that in black like a normal note, and then I'll just write statistic in the left margin. Same thing for an example. So that's it for my bullet system. If you want to uh, download this and print it and maybe stick it in the front of your uh, duotang or your binder, check out my blog post down below. Let's move on to my color coding system. So this was my original color coding system, but this used two different sets of these zebra highlighters. And that would involve buying the both sets and not really using all of the colors because, of course, each set has, uh, I think, four colors in it and this is not eight colors. So I've sort of changed it, so I'll walk you through exactly how I've changed it. Also, you'll see here, this was my original color code system, um, and this was kind of describing the steps I would take during a lecture when it came to taking notes. So you can read that if you want, but it doesn't really apply anymore, and I like to simplify things as much as possible, and this was getting a little bit too complicated for me. So these were the two sets of mild liners, zebra mild liners. I have a link down below to the Amazon link if you want to purchase them. This one came with a gray as well, but that ran out, so I threw it out. And this is the set that I use now for highlighting. I always highlight in order, because of course some things apply in many different categories, but I'll highlight them with uh, the color that's on the topmost of the hierarchy, so that's why the, that's what these numbers correspond to, actually. Um, of course, this doesn't apply anymore, so I'll just tell you how I do it now. So this is basically the hierarchy. I use this blue for definitions. Blue has always associated, uh, been associated with definitions in my mind. I don't know why, but... So I'll always highlight definitions first. Even if they're in the title, I'll highlight them with the blue. Um, this is for titles later, so uh, that's what I mean by highlighting in order of the hierarchy that it'll be blue even if it's in the title. I'll use pink and highlight on top of the word if it's a key person. So that's in subjects like history or economics if I have uh, specific people that we're studying and I want them to stand out on the page, which I do, that's why I highlight them in pink. Um, so that's how I do that. The gray, uh, sorry, the greenish blue color, I use this for key topics or uh, titles. And I don't actually highlight the words themselves, but I highlight bars on the left and right of the word so that it stands out nicely. And then the yellow is for important information that I want to also stand out. So I'll show you an example in my notes. This is an example of a page in my philosophy notes, and it's the mind-body problem topic. So I'll write that at the top. This is my Cornell system. Um, the mind-body problem, it's the title, so I'll use this greenish-blue color, highlight in bars, these are subtopics along the left. Again, for specifically how I take these notes, check out the uh, video series down below in the description. And I underline these topics. Then for key people, those are in pink. For definitions, those are in blue. And for key information, that's in yellow. I actually usually do this first, and then when it comes time to study for the test, I'll use the yellow to highlight that information. Um, so that's like the second time around that I'm reviewing the information. And until then, it stays without yellow. So those are my notes, and that's my bullet system, my migration system, my signifier system, and my color system. There's two things that I forgot to mention. The first thing is that if there is a quote from a textbook or from the teacher, I'll use this dark blue color as well. And then also I have one gray Tombow that I like to use for um, putting boxes around more key information or underlining things like I did here, or even decorating the super, super big titles. So for example, this topic was the mind-body problem, but it's a subtopic of the unit human nature. So I'll write that in gray usually. And that's it for my bullet system. I hope you guys enjoyed and don't forget to grab this down below and download and print it and feel free to insert it in your notebook. I will also add this in the printable so that um, it's included. See you later, Mr. Spirit. Have a nice day.